What is going on, my guys, gals, non binary pals, and nerds everywhere? Welcome back to Nerd Explosion, the weekly podcast where, based on a monthly theme, I nerd out about whatever I want. As always, I'm your host, Cameron, and joining with me today is my lovely wife, Kate. Hi. And today is actually going to be the last episode of Reddit Month because there's literally one more. There's literally just one day left of January, I just realized. Because I thought I had two more days, but I'm also an idiot, so there's that. Can confirm. But since this is the last episode of Reddit Month, I figured I would do a smorgasbord of Reddit stuff, Reddit stories. And the theme for all these stories today is birthday, because... It's your birthday! Well, not by the time this episode goes out, but yeah. Uh, this episode will be out on like the 27th and the 30th will be my birthday. So I figured why not just do a bunch of birthday themed Reddit stories because I'm turning, I'm getting, you know, one year closer to my inevitable demise. Yeah, you're getting old. <laughs> I'm going to be 31. Jesus. Gross. But yeah, I just figured. Uh, I'm still happily in my 20s. For now. Ha ha, you're turning 30 this year. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Um, one of us. One of us. I still have six more months. Thank you very much. It's coming. You can run all you want, but you can't hide. I'm slowly turning into the Patrick running away from Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> like, no! Oh, I love that. That was a. Uh, I think that was a meme last year. It was like uh, people, it was like 2023, and then like people who were 29, and it was Patrick running away, and then the rope was turning 30. Yeah, that's how it was. That's how it is for me. The one I keep seeing is like SpongeBob and Patrick running, and SpongeBob is um, 93 babies, and then he gets caught, right? And then the rope comes back out, and it says turning 30, and Patrick is 94 babies, and he's just like, ah! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm oh, like, yeah, I really do feel like that. Dear God. But uh, dirty, yeah. Dirty. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're reading some birthday themed Reddit stories. So I guess before I get into that, got to do my, my usual shenanigan. Uh, new episodes of this podcast come out every Saturday. Uh, Link is in the link tree in the description for all different places. And now my podcast is actually available on YouTube. It's not anything fancy, it's just a static image, but if you, for some reason, don't like Spotify and you just want to scour YouTube for podcasts, mine is on there, so. Or if you want to do what I do and just throw YouTube podcast on in the background where you're doing other shit, you do that too. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm the perfect podcast for background noise. Especially since, like you said, it's a static image, so it's not like they're missing any video or anything, they can just have it running, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's... (laughs) <laughs> That's what I pride myself on. I pride myself on being the perfect podcast to just turn on in the background and not actually pay attention to. Also, apologies. I have a twinge of the sniffles. I'll try to edit out as much as I can, but yeah, she a sniffly one. She a sniffly bitch. Joke's on you. I'm a sniffly bitch. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into these Reddit stories, shall we? Uh, let me pull up here. Let's get into this. Which one should we start with? I got. Uh, am let's I the? Let's start with a good old fashioned. Today I fucked up. Today I fucked up. Let's start with that one. Okay, because that's I only have one of these. So, today I fucked up by making a porn joke at my friend's birthday party and getting kicked out of the friend group. Let him cook. <laughs> this took place around 2011 when I was 22 years old. I was at my friend Jack's birthday party. Me, Jack, and some other friends were talking about nostalgic shows and cartoons. We talked about Spongebob, The Simpsons, Roadrats, Pokemon, and many more. One person mentioned VeggieTales, and I chuckled slightly. That person asked me why I left, and I decided to explain. For some context, I had a traumatic incident while watching VeggieTales cartoon porn. I was masturbating with an orange, and the juice got in the pee hole. Um, we're all adults here. That is called the urethra. Also, not being a penis owner myself, I can tell you, that sounds horrifically painful. <laughs> well, I mean, you don't have to be a penis owner. He mentions, like, the pee hole, the urethra. Right. Everybody has a urethra. Right, but I don't know how well you know 
anatomy, but typically there are ways. In a penis owner, the re- urethra is more easily accessible. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. It hurt, and it happened while I was watching VeggieTales porn. Now that you guys have context, let's get to what I said. I said something along the lines of, Larry is hot, he looks like a green dick, and Bob the Tomato is red and curvy. I'm surprised they made the characters so sexy. <laughs> I thought this was a funny joke everybody would laugh at, but everybody went silent. The silence was deafening. I asked everybody if I said something wrong. One of them asked if I was mentally ill. <laughs> Come on, it was just a joke. I don't look at that stuff anymore, I said. Anymore? You used to be sexually attracted to VeggieTales porn? Jack said. Just forget about all this. Let's play some Todd or Halo, I said. I think you, you should just leave, Jack said. I ended up leaving and felt like a total buffoon. I powered off my iPhone 4 and didn't turn on my Xbox 360. I went to sleep incredibly early and didn't leave bed for like 14 hours because I felt so guilty. After I finally got the courage to check my messages, I was removed from everything. I was removed from group chats, I was unfriended on Xbox, people deleted my number, and people even sent me messages asking me not to contact them. I lost my entire friend group over a dumb joke. Too long didn't read, made a weird cartoon porn joke, and lost a ton of friends. I... <laughs> okay, so I think this is a troll post. Like, I this some, can't be, this can't be real. This can't be real. <laughs> That's what I think. This can't be real, but goddamn is it not, is it funny? <laughs> so... <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> okay. You explain your point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some research. Let's pretend... That this is a real story. And if it is a real story, I feel like there's some context missing. Because I feel like for the whole group to be like, this is it. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. Right? There has to be something. Like, this dude is, was probably on thin ice when he made the, the tomato fucking joke. Right? Yeah. Like, if you said some off-the-cuff shit like that. Like, if it was... In our friend group... We'd be like, that was weird, but whatever, we'd move past it, right? Like, there's some behavior that I'm picking up that's questionable. <laughs> if this is a real post. If it's a troll post, brava, beautifully written. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I just, yeah, if it was a real post, then I'm definitely concerned about this person, but... Well, yeah, like I said, there's some context missing for the whole friend group to just be like, no, we're done. After that one comment, like... Oh, yeah, I a thousand percent. There's some behavior for sure. I a thousand percent believe this is just a this is a fake story. Yeah. Just you know, just for kicks and whatnot. Shits and gigs. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to r slash pro revenge. How about that? How about that? Love me some pro revenge. All right, start with this. Draw one. the cat eye sharp enough to kill a man. I do. I what? Never mind. Continue. <laughs> Uh, I forgot this one, I was the only Swifty here. This one is from It's Me 03. Birthday present to my ex-wife. Was told you guys would get a kick out of this. I had originally posted it to another topic, but it was suggested I'd share it with you. So here it is. Gather around, boys and girls, because it is time for the story of my cheating ex-wife and how I fucked her. Now bear with me, as this is a bit of a long one, but fuck it. So I had a feeling she was cheating as she set off a lot of red flags, constantly laughing and smiling when texting, saying it was just her mother when I asked, needing to stay late every night after work. When I'd call, her, when I'd call in, her co-workers said she left hours ago. When I asked her what was going on, she'd laugh it off and say it was just something they did to each other at the office all the time. The last straw to where I knew something was definitely up was when she went out to get milk at 11.30 at night and didn't come back till 2 in the morning. Now, if there is any words of wisdom I could pass on to others in all my years of experience, it's if you think your significant other is cheating, hire a fucking private investigator. They're goddamn good at what they do, and they will get some evidence that really helps in the later divorce. Fast track to her birthday several months down the road. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why the hell did I wait months before I confronted her and did it really need to be on her birthday? 
The answer to the first question is I wanted as much evidence as possible to hand off to my lawyer, as well as make arrangements to find a new place to live, etc. Answer to your second question is, of course it had to be on her birthday. You see, after asking her what she wanted to do on her birthday this year, she was rather insistent on me going out of town with my friends, as she just had to work anyways and didn't want to be reminded she was aging. So I know something is up. Bullshit. <laughs> So I know something is up, and after finding a bottle of champagne and two glasses hidden in my closet, so something in my something in me snaps. Okay, god, hold she on. Went, pause. She went the champagne route. Hold on, pause. Oh my god! Like, so not only is she cheating, but she's also a fucking idiot. <laughs> also, oh, really? for my birthday, I want you to go out of town with your friends. Huh? Also, champagne and two glasses. That's like. That's like movie style cheating. Like this bitch does not that give is a rom com style cheating. Like, she checked out of that relationship a long time ago. It sounds like. All right, continuing. So I do what any sensible man would have done. I leave and go to my friend's house, pretending like I'm going out of town. Smart move. While there, I call up her mother, father, sister, and several of her friends. I tell them how I want to give her a big surprise by sneaking into her room with party streamers, kazoos, and a big cake with candles. Sounds fun, right? Well, boy, was it. It's 8.30 in the morning, and I have everyone met just outside our apartment. We all pile in the elevator, about eight of us in total. Her mother holding the cake, and me reminding everyone to be as quiet as they can be. I put my key in and unlock the door. We all sneak in and make our way down the hall towards the bedroom, each holding a kazoo and mom holding the cake, grinning from ear to ear. Well, as I throw open the door and we all yell surprise, but the surprise was on us and there was my wife, bent over in doggy style position with her lover staring at us wide-eyed mid-thrust. <laughs> mom drops the cake, sister screams, father begins to shout. I pretend like I'm horrified to which her friends try to push everyone out while yelling at her wife, excuse me, ex-wife, is sobbing and screaming how could I while the lover is desperately trying to put his pants on while running out of the place. Needless to say, it was one of the best birthday presents I've ever given. Too long, didn't read. Gave ex-wife a kick-ass birthday present. Now, Opie put some edits here. Edit. Broke up text, so easier to read. Edit 2. Posted a response to trying to answer most of your questions. Let me know if there's anything else you wanted to know. Oh, shit. They did post a... They did post some uh, answer questions in a comment. But, some uh, Q's and A's. So, first off, what do you think? I just love... Can I... Uh, sorry, I was chewing on my own hair, apparently. <laughs> um, I just so, look over, she's just like, yum, yum. I'm like, what, what the, the hell are you doing over hashtag there? Hashtag hairdresser problems. So, here's the thing. He hit the nail on the head. If you think your spouse is cheating, they are. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, it's just people who cheat. I know that from first-hand experience. As do I. If there's that little spidey sense in the back of your head that, like, something's not right here, mm -hmm. it's not. Which brings me to my next point, I will which say is totally separate, which is why I'm just super glad that we have a solid enough relationship that we're like... If something feels, I mean, obviously neither one of us are cheating, but like if something feels off, if there's like a shift in the vibes, we're confident and comfortable enough in ourselves and in our relationship to be like, so you made a comment that's fucking weird. What was that about? You know what I mean? Like we have a strong enough relationship to sit down with each other and be like, hey, the vibes aren't vibing. Uh, we need a serious vibe check in here. We need a vibe check in here. Um, also... I love the fact that she gets caught literally balls deep and then has the audacity to turn around and be like, how could you do this to me? I <laughs> that was, fucking spun me. I will say, well, first of all, I love how this guy told the story. Oh, absolutely. Genius. S second, this was a genius move on his part. Like, he fucking, like, went assassin mode. <laughs> Oh, this and can you imagine the impending divorce when they bring character witnesses and her own parents are like, no, we caught her red-handed. We saw. No, we, we all literally saw you. I don't think I could ever look my parents in the face again if they walked in on me in a compromising position like that. Right. Regardless of who it was with, I would be mortified. 
Um, should I read uh, OP's uh, answered or qu- answered questions from stuff? Sure, I'm curious. Um, oh, this post was nine years ago, but anyway, OP in the comments was like, "Fuck, sorry, everyone." was about to respond when I saw I had a bunch of requests as to what happened next, so here it is. Oh, yes, we love an update. Well, to be honest, it was funny as hell at first. I tried to disguise my laughing by pretending I was choking up. After so long of being betrayed, I was the one who got to have the last laugh. Plus, since I had hired the private investigator, I was able to prove she was using my money to pay for things for her lover. Hotels, dinners, etc. So I, I did get some compensation for that. Though... She still get she still did get half of my life savings, fucking bitch. <laughs> but I was but I was young and just starting out, so the amount fucking I had bitch. then was pretty laughable now. So then reality sets in. Your marriage is over. The woman you f- fell in love with has betrayed you, and the last 2 years of your life were a bit of a waste. In the end, it's not even about the money. I really thought I loved this girl. Why didn't she love me? For the longest time, I wondered what was wrong with me and if anyone would truly be able to love me. Not to mention, I was really close to her dad. Mine left when I was younger, and I never spoke to him since then, so hers kind of took me under his wing. Kind of the father I never had. I still call him from time to time, share with him my accomplishments as they come, and even stop by to see him when I get a chance. Divorce is never fun, boys and girls, and take my advice. When you're young and in love, don't be foolish and run into something. Take some time to really get to know the other person. Wait three to five years. Move in together. I wish someone had just pulled me aside and said, Man, think about what you're doing. Maybe you should give it some time. Also, another piece of advice. The old saying about how you know a girl, how a girl really is by how she treats her parents. This is absolutely true. She was a total bitch to her parents. I should have been my first red flag. (laughs) See, and that's my green flag because I'm... My parent, we, my parents and I have a great relationship. Yeah, I mean, not to like brag or anything, but we literally moved in the year we met and got engaged the next year. Literally, we met in February. We were living together by October, and then we were engaged by the following April. And then married that very next year. So, like, uh, it was a year and a half. But I mean, we've had our share of ups and downs, but oh, yeah. we're lucky enough to actually have a good relationship. But but we also... Because, like, I mean, and listen here, listeners, the one thing that is keeping our marriage, you know, steady, communication. Dog, I was literally just about to say that. Like, I was f- like, we know how to talk. Because there, there's a point, and I'm going to hop on my soapbox here for a second. <laughs> oh, I just I don't understand how my partner feels. Fucking talk. Here's a crazy idea. Ask. Like, literally, fucking because talk. Because, but, but to be fair... It took us a long time to get there, though, because there's still that, like, we're both very much people pleasers because we were raised, I'm I'm the oldest child, you were raised as the oldest child. So, we're both people pleasers. So, there was that kind of barrier that, like, I'm going to say something or this is bothering me and it's going to hurt your feelings, but I have to bring it up. And once you get past the fact that, like, we can't be afraid to hurt each other's feelings. That doesn't mean that we have to enter the conversation maliciously. Right. But there have been times where we've both been like, look, you've been doing this thing recently and it's just really bothering me and blah, blah, blah. And when the conversation starts like that, it's so much easier because it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was making you feel that way. I'll, I'll work on that. Yeah. Or the very rare occasion where it's like, The very rare, there's been very rare occasions where, and you and I have both done it, where it's like, I mean, that's just who I am. You're going to have to get over it. Yeah. But having the conversation makes it 10 times better. I mean, your doom pile of clothes almost caused me to file for divorce this morning, but (laughs) that's a conversation for another day. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just the key with any good relationship is just fucking talk about shit. But also, if you think your partner is cheating, they are. <laughs> like, either, yeah, I just don't let that slide. Don't be I like... I have a caveat to that statement, actually. Because there are people who are just convinced that everybody's cheating on them and there's no pe- evidence to back it up. Yeah, like... Unless you're that person, if you feel like your partner is cheating on you, they are. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if there are good sides, then 
you know, obviously investigate, but don't just assume because it's not good to be paranoid like that. And then you just end up making things worse. Right. So, yeah. And if you really think, if you really feel like your partner is cheating on you, confront them. Yeah. The way they react to that conversation will tell you everything you need to know. I know that firsthand, but I'm As not, not going to get into that. As do I. All right, let's move on to the next pro-revenge post. I don't think it's going to be as funny as the last one, but, you know, we'll see. That guy is a legend. I just want that on the record. This also. last yeah. yeah. Uh, this is from Tony DeMillo. Make me quit the day before my birthday. Have fun getting fired. I've been lurking in the oh, sub for a little... I think I've heard this one, actually. This one's I, great. I've been lurking in the sub for a little while, and I think it's finally time to share my story. Not as good as most people's in here, but I feel it's worth sharing. Too long didn't read at the bottom. So, quick background. From 2009 to 2012, I worked at a local quick lube chain. Oil changes in under 20 minutes, only using a trusted oil brand, etc., etc. Going into this job, I assumed that's all I'd be doing. Quick oil changes and the occasional tire rotation. I was wrong. Working for this specific chain, it's all about the extra services and products to bang customers over the head for what they might actually need, but not for double the price of the local auto parts store. Maintaining a higher average sale every month was very important for keeping your job. And just for reference, the district managers wanted all service techs to be at, at least to at least have a sixty dollar plus average every month. A basic oil change was thirty five dollars. God, I wish I could pay that much. Right. I mean, I already get it cheap enough, but thirty five? Shit. Yeah, but we can't do Dave dirty. Right. On average, we would do anywhere from 20 to 50 cars a day, depending on the day of the week in a three-bay garage. It's also worth noting that if you managed a high monthly sales average consistently, you were considered better than everyone else and put at the front of the line for promotions. It was also very common for someone with a high average to go from a tech to being a manager of their own store within a year. Yes, there was a high turnover rate. And yes, it was most certainly due to management consistently hiring drug addicts and not ruining, not running background checks on people. Now, starts my story. Over the course of my employment, I worked my way up to being a shift supervisor. This was one position below a system manager, but I still held keys to the shop and had the alarm systems code. I opened and closed the shop regularly, and if I wasn't too busy with college, I could have been an assistant manager anytime I wanted. Managers I worked with loved me, and a district manager as well. It was honestly a fun job. I made a lot of friends working there that I'm still friends with to this day. But then we got a new manager we'll call Johnny. Johnny was a dick. Johnny was a dick. <laughs> Younger guy, 25 at the time, thought he was hot shit because he held an $80 plus, $80 plus sales average consistently since he started. Some people considered him a blessing because he helped other techs get their averages up too. Turns out, he only helped them to make himself look better for raises and promotions. Here's a quick list of things Johnny did once he took over my store. Consistently disappeared while working for hours at a time to go walk around talking to the local college girls. Left every Saturday, the shop's busiest day, three to five hours early and would have someone else clock him out at the end of the day. I soon discovered he lived in the next town over from me and knew people that knew him. Johnny? A manager? Last time I saw him, he was so coked up he punched himself in the face till he bled. He dropped out of high school and he ended up living in the park for a while. How did he get the job with no diploma? He was bipolar, oh. so screaming matches and temper tantrums became a regularity. We had an employment in... Yeah. We had an employee that I believe had some form of autism, and Johnny would make him do dumb stuff because he thought it was funny. Ooh, I'm already, I'm already yeah, not liking Johnny. Johnny. Uh, he dumped a mop bucket filled with dirty water on the <gasps> shop's floor as soon as I finished mopping it oh. at the end of the day because I pissed him off somehow. Yeah, I thought I thought he was going to say he dumped it on the guy, but I no. felt my blood pressure spike. Like I was ready to be like, <gasps> but uh, anyway, where was I? He got people that he didn't like fired by making fake schedules showing they were off for three days straight when they were actually on the schedule to work, and when the employee didn't show up for the shifts, he would write them up in secret for a no-call, no-show for each day, but didn't tell the employee until they came in for their supposed shift and would fire them on the spot. 
if you want to argue, call corporate. And now my favorite thing he did often that I watch in on him doing. Remember how I said he held an $80 plus average? Well, he did that by ripping off elderly customers by lying to them about their cars, selling them services that either weren't actually getting done or weren't even needed, and selling parts that weren't even parts the car had that could have been replaced or just wouldn't be getting replaced. It's fucked up. I discovered this little scam by getting stuck closing the shop so he could go home a few hours early. I decided to use the time to go through the day's invoices and find two two huge sales on cars that I worked on. Only problem was that I didn't do any of the services on either of those cars. Hell, one of the invoices said the transfer case and rear differential were serviced. Those don't exist on 2011 Honda Civics. I then started watching the customers he would ring up and write down notes like the car, time, and customer. At the end of the day, I'd find those invoices and get the internal numbers. At the time, I didn't think I'd ever use those notes, but 100% thought they would be useful, and it certainly was useful the day before my birthday. I requested my birthday off two months in advance by submitting a formal request form and handed it to the assistant manager who just started learning how to make the schedule and left a copy on Johnny's desk. The day before my birthday... Johnny and the assistant manager were looking over the schedule in front of everyone to see who was working the next day, and when he discovered I was off, he asked why. To which the assistant manager replied, Well, yeah, he requested it a while ago. Didn't you see the form? Johnny replies with, Yeah, I did. Fuck that. Request denied. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, did he drop the F word? He dropped the F word. (laughs) The (laughs) F-A-double-G. Ooh. Request denied. You're working tomorrow. Got a problem with it? Turn in your keys now, because if you don't show up, you're fired. I promptly changed into my street clothes, took the key off my key ring, handed it to Johnny, and left. He called me back a few hours later, begging me to come back, but I would still have to work on my birthday. I laughed for a few seconds and hung up. Now, it's time for the revenge. I got in contact with someone in the corporate office a few hours away, explained the situation that had occurred in the morning, and gave a few examples of what Johnny was doing wrong in the store. They asked if I could email them everything I had and promised they would look into it. The DM gave me a call, asking if I wanted to work at a different store, but I turned it down, deciding it's time for me to move on. The job job made me hate cars and people, so it was time to move on. I didn't hear anything about it for a while. So the guy who is now my best friend calls me laughing hysterically with news about Johnny. Apparently, Johnny has been begging for had been begging for a raise or a promotion to start training people to become managers so he would be out of the stores and customer service completely. One day, he got a call from the corporate office to discuss this. He was beyond elated and told everyone who would listen. Turns out that was a lie. They had him drive three hours away to sit him down and review footage of the things he's been doing, going over those bogus invoices, <laughs> and listen to voicemails of customers calling and complaining about getting ripped off. He was immediately fired. Found out he ended up never finding work in the state again, and actually ended up moving a few states away. Myself, I ended up in a different industry working for the state, making way more money with a ton of benefits. Unless Johnny hit the lotto, the winner is me. That's fucking awesome. Well done, sir. The God. <laughs> fuck Johnny, man. God. I don't even know if that's his real name, but... Fuck you, Johnny! Fuck you, Johnny! God. Yeah, no, that sounds like an, a grade-A douchebag. Oh, yeah, the Toulon did read. Jerk off manager acted like a jerk and ripped off full people to make himself look good. After he forced me into a position to quit, I snitched. A few weeks later, he drives three hours away to corporate, a meeting where he thinks he's getting a raise or promotion, but he actually ended up getting fired. <laughs> he's lucky they didn't make him pay all that back. Right. If I mean, that should have been his first sign for Johnny. Like, not saying he didn't deserve it, but if randomly corporate is just like, hey, come to our office for something, that should be your sign. I like, oh boy, I might be in trouble. Not be like, ooh, I'm getting a promotion. Like, no, if corporate wants to talk to you, you done goofed. Right, I feel like if corporate was going to bring you in to, like, promote you, I feel like they would come to your store. Right, they would, like, they would 
come, I, I don't also, know. I'm very much pro our nation's snitching policy. <laughs> Snitches get stitches. However, there are certain cases I'm fucking snitching. Like, don't. <laughs> I'm not right. going down with your bullshit. I'm fucking snitching. <laughs> that would be one of those cases. Exactly. Good on good on OP. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and good for them that they seem to be thriving while Johnny gets to literally probably rot in hell. <laughs> All right. Moving on to the next story we have from r slash malicious compliance. I fucking love malicious compliance. Now, this is a this is kind of a short one, so I'll do it after I have cake and ice cream. My husband took my son, eight years old, camping for five days, and they had a fantastic time. They had a fantastic time hiking, climbing, and getting very, very dirty. On their way home, we met up at the grandparents' house to celebrate their cousin's birthday. I asked my son to go take a shower before he ate, before we ate, because he was so grubby. He didn't want to, but he agreed that he'd do it after he had cake and ice cream. We ate, sang happy birthday, and we had dessert. Now you have to go take a shower, I told my son. No, I don't, he replied. You said I had to do it after taking ice cream, so I only ate ice cream. (laughs) That kid's going places. What a genius. That kid kid is going places. OP, you done got played. Also, I You got played by an eight-year-old. Also, I have a cousin that would do exactly that same shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be a move TJ would pull for sure. I'll take a shower after I eat uh, cake and ice cream. Okay, now I'm going to take a shower. I, I, didn't, eat, I didn't eat cake. I didn't eat cake yet. <laughs> oh my God. And I can see like, my uncle here. being like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> now, me as a dad, I'd just be like, listen here, you little shit. <laughs> listen here, you little shit. <laughs> well, yeah, well well done. Well done, little dude. Little dude. Little dude. Little dude. Little dude. Little dude. Shall we get to the last story? Yeah. Lay it on me. This is not really another long one, but this is marked asshole. Okay. Am I the asshole for inviting my boyfriend's brother to his party, uh, to his birthday party? My boyfriend celebrated his birthday yesterday. He allowed me to plan everything, which OP loves doing. I invited all of our friends and his brother. He told me before that he doesn't have a good relationship with his older brother, so I thought it would be a nice surprise. So we had a party. Strike one. (laughs) So we had a party yesterday. All of our friends came, and it was a good time. Then his brother came a bit later than the others. I immediately noticed his face drop, and I was like, "Oh no!" They greeted each other, but I noticed how uncomfortable my boyfriend was. He actually seemed borderline anxious and insecure. He pulled me aside and asked me if I invited him. I said yes, and he got very mad. He was very shocked and said stuff like, You know I don't like him. You ruined my birthday. Why did you do this to me? Then he actually left the party and went home. I tried calling him multiple times, but he didn't pick up. The party was pretty much ruined then. This morning, he told me he doesn't want to speak right now, and just responds with, Yep, nah, you know the drill. That's literally all they put, so... I'm already kind of irritated... Right off the bat, not just with the context of the story, but there seems to be a lot missing here. There's a lot of backstory I need. Like, okay, why does he not like his brother? Like, that's the stuff we need to know. Also, is this one-sided, or does the older brother know how the younger brother feels? And in that case, the the older brother should have been like, nah, I'm not going. I mean, to the point, I mean, somebody in the comments was like, how on earth would that be a nice surprise when someone literally says they don't have a good relationship with someone? Did you think the birthday would fix whatever problems they have magically? Or do you just not listen to your boyfriend and respect his feelings? You're the asshole. Correct. Like, and that's the thing. Like, we could easily, we easily could need, like, okay, what happened between your boyfriend and their brother? Right. Like, what happened there? But, I mean, apparently it was something that, you know, they really didn't the boyfriend didn't want to see his brother. So I feel like if somebody really doesn't want to see somebody, you do what you can not to see that person. Right. Like, don't invite, like, you know, I've made some enemies in the past. I've not gone to weddings because I don't want to be there. Like, and that's, like, 
like there are people out there that like sure I'll act friendly with but I'm not going to actively be like hey come to this thing or I'm not going to actively be like hey I'm going to go to your thing and just randomly or whatever right like if somebody doesn't have a good relationship just leave it at that and if they want to like if it's something the other person did then they should be the one to start the process of fixing it you know if they want to heal old wounds like same thing goes the other way like if you did something then you should like if you want you know eventually i mean if if that's what the case is if it's just not gonna happen then it's not gonna happen but either way if somebody wants to be like hey i want to repair this relationship then the person who caused you know most of the problem probably should be the one to start also i have an issue with the way she ended that post because she was like well, he doesn't want to talk right. He said he doesn't want to talk right now. So he's just responding with, yep, and nah, and you know the drill. Like, he doesn't want to talk to you. Stop trying to have a conversation. Right? You're just like, making him more angry. They'll talk when they want to talk. Right. Like, if you egg that on, then it's just, it's only going to make things worse. Right. Asshole. 100%. Well, now I feel like I need to find another story. Because I kind of don't want to end on that one. (laughs) (laughs) I'll find one. I'm going to stop the episode right here before we get into this last story. Uh, This story is a really long story. And this is also going to serve as a trigger warning because the story does involve elements of child abuse and sexual assault. And it's, it's a really sad story for most, for the most part, for most of it. So, if you're uncomfortable with all, any of those things, like abuse or sexual assault, feel free to stop listening now. But if that's something that you're okay with hearing, then please continue listening. But this is just a quick trigger warning. Okay, so this one comes from Am I the Asshole? The verdict was not the asshole. Okay. Am I the asshole for not giving my nephew his birthday gift? Okay. Just bear with me for a moment. Let him cook. Let him cook. My 29 female nephew, Josh, 12 male, is quite spoiled. Hmm, We know a thing or two about that, don't we? (laughs) His parents, my brother and sister-in-law, show blatant favoritism towards him over his younger sister, Lou, 9 female. As a result, sadly, Josh has grown a little bit entitled. He is also quite mean to his younger sister because his parents never believe her when she tells them what he's done to her or what he's done to her stuff. Now, I'm usually very strict when the kids are with me for a weekend. Josh is usually on his best behavior. Now, Josh's birthday was yesterday. Lou had a spelling bee last week and got first prize. Her parents brushed it off, but I was happy for her because she spent hours learning each word and I was very proud. So when I took the kids out the day before Josh's birthday so he could pick out a gift for his birthday, I got Lou a stuffed animal as a you did great. Josh picked the game he's been wanting. At the birthday party, or no, sorry, the birthday party was yesterday and I went to their house. Or, and I went, and when I went to their house, Lou had been grounded and was not allowed to attend and the two friends she had invited were also sent back home. I thought it was extreme and asked what she had done. Turns out, Josh and her argued over the TV remote, and Josh went into her room and destroyed her stuffed animal that I gave her and told her she didn't deserve it. Lou screamed at him, and my brother got angry with her, quote, temper tantrum, and had to pick up the- had her pick up the pieces of the stuffed animal and throw them in the trash, all while she cried, and then she was grounded. What? By the way- Josh's best friend was the one who spilled the beans to me and also told me that Josh goaded his parents into the punishment. I was furious and refused to give Josh his birthday present, telling him he didn't deserve it for being mean to his sister. I also told off my sister-in-law and brother that they are growing increasingly cruel towards their young daughter. Now my family is pissed that I refused to give Josh his birthday gift. So, am I the asshole? Absolutely not. TLDR, nephew picked on sister and I refused to give him his birthday present. Fuck those parents? There's two edits. Oh my god. Is it updates or answer questions? It's just edits. Let's see. Um, so edit one. I have picked up my niece from my brother's house this morning. I called him and told him if she's being so rude to her brother, then maybe she should stay with me for a couple days to calm down. In parentheses, I had no other choice but to say this. I had to get her out of there. 
I got her a massive teddy bear, which she's keeping in my house, and I took her out to get McDonald's, so she's smiling, but I am looking for a more permanent solution. Edit two. Guys, I'll be updating on my own page, but thank you for your incredible advice. I have read all the comments. There's a lot going on. I don't have the strength of mind to reply, but I'll post an update in a couple of days. Fingers crossed it's a positive one. Update, niece and nephew. <clears throat> okay. So this is a year ago. So it's been a while since my last update, and I was pondering over whether or not to make this, but I got a lot of requests for one, so here it goes. My name is cleared legally from every angle. Hold on, what? What? Where? When? Hang on. Did they have to cross the border? Is there, is there, <laughs> does this, does this go all the way to the top? <laughs> Is there a, is okay, there a okay. dancer named Two Toes Johnny involved? So I found the update for the, um, am I the asshole? Um, it's been a hell of a week. First of all, I want to say thank you for all the kind comments and messages. We're going on a deep dive, people. Buckle up. Um, I only managed to respond to a few because I was pretty overwhelmed with the whole thing. There's a lot going on. As you can tell from my other posts, I'm in the middle of switching careers, so I simply don't have the funds to support my niece. And by that, I mean no one is going to give me my niece to foster because my income is low. I'm a free ma- freelance romance writer and that doesn't really generate a lot of income. I say this because I did seek out advice from social services in my country and they just shook their head at me, but I'll get into that later. On to the actual update. I did end up taking my niece with me for a couple days. I sat her down and talked to her when she was calm. There were a lot of things that were happening in the house that I was not aware of. My nephew bullies her and my brother thinks it's funny when she cries. A few months ago, my niece had an accident and fractured her left arm. I was told she slipped down the stairs. She is clumsy, so I thought that was it. Turns out, her brother pushed her down the stairs as a prank, and my brother laughed while she was screaming in pain. I verified the story with a neighbor who told me that she ended up taking her to the hospital. Her father was apparently shouting at her to stop making a racket when she wouldn't stop screaming in pain. This is sounding very familiar. Like I've Now that I hear this part, I feel like I've heard this story. I lost it at that. I asked her if her mom knew. She said yes. Now, my childhood was pretty dark, but not like this. I called my parents and asked them about this incident and a couple of others. And at first, they hee-hawed. We didn't know. Blah, blah, blah. And then my mom admitted she knew and that it was just kids being kids. I had seen red at that point. This whole week, I've been gathering any bit of evidence I can find... Finally, I invited over my brother and his wife, and I told them if they didn't get their shit together, I was posting everything on social media. I was going to email it to their companies, friends, whatnot. Thank you to whomever suggested this. At first, my brother was furious when he tried to attack me. I pointed towards the camera in my living room. He was so angry that I felt like I was numb. Or, I was so angry I felt like I was numb. I knew that this would destroy my relationship with my entire family, but they let a little girl... They left a little girl screaming at the bottom of the stairs, and my brother laughed. I can't get that image out of my head. I told them I could either call social services in our country and get Lou taken from them, or they could give her to me. The problem with this threat is that if I went the social services route, I would lose Lou as well. I told them if they don't want a daughter, they can give her to me. They can pretend she never existed. I was just speaking very quietly. Very quickly at that point, I don't even remember what I said. I would take over her expenses, etc., except for her health insurance and school fees. I just told them they would never have to look at her again. I just kept talking. My sister-in-law started crying of how I was taking her child from her, and I admittedly got angry over that. I reminded her that she wanted to abort Lou when she was pregnant. I was legit angry crying at this moment. I wanted to hit them. My brother was silent. He was actually considering it. Wow. Oh, my. God. I told them it was better than having their dirty laundry aired in public because if it did, both kids would be removed from their house. It was blackmail, but I had no options. They said they would think about it, but Lou is with me for now. My sister-in-law was pretty nasty about it, too. In her words, keep the little slut. This girl is nine, might I remind you. Where do these people live? I just want to talk. (laughs) All in my language, of course. I don't know how she can refer to her daughter like that, but honestly, I don't give a shit. My friend is a lawyer, and he told me to get a voice message from them that Lou is going to stay with me. My sister-in-law sent over this voice note. Lou hasn't mentioned going home. She doesn't talk to her about her parents. Yesterday, she and I went out and bought 
it, this lavender color paint we painted my entire guest bedroom for her. I decided to pick up more projects so that I can start saving for her. I did have some money set aside for a potential college fund, but I'll be picking up more work to save more and give her a comfortable life. I did get calls from my parents shouting at me. I closed the phone on them. The only person who is supportive is my cousin. He said that if social services do get involved, he can take Lou in and I can move closer to them or something. I don't know. Lou is quiet. She's happy sometimes. Sometimes she's just quiet. I feared she suffered more abuse in that house and she's letting on. My lawyer friend recommended a child therapist, so I booked a session for Monday. It's been three days and no call from my brother or sister-in-law. My parents call every now and then to yell at me, but they yell at me either way, so whatever. I feel like this might work because both brother and sister-in-law saw the posts I had written out as a draft with pictures and evidence. It was extreme enough that they would suffer damages at their jobs, and news channels in my country eat this shit up, especially if it happens in an educated household. I don't know what to do. I know blackmail is wrong, but I don't know what to do. Oh, my God. Um, okay. So there's well, there's two more updates. Two more? There's two more. I pray that this ends in a, on a good note. Because, my God, I am sad. I am angry. Oh, and because this is hitting especially close to home because we're in the adoption process. So mm. it's just like my blood is boiling right now. Right. First of all, we don't slut shame in this house. Second of all, yeah, she is a child. Fucking, she is nine, nine years, years old. old. Especially a nine-year-old girl? Like, the fuck? Listen, these parents... Parents, if you're listening, these hands is rated E for everyone. (laughs) Anyway. (coughs) So, update. update. Please. It's been a minute. Sorry for the sudden silence. My inbox is overflowing and I haven't touched it in a while. Also, sorry for the tiny heading, which makes no sense. God, I'm tired. I wanted to give an update considering how many of you reached out and asked and offered help offered help advice or anything under the sun all of which i'm very grateful for and probably why i'm writing this post so a lot has happened since my last post i don't even know where to begin lou has been removed from my care i guess i should start from that point they took her away four days ago social services she's with my cousin and she's called me crying multiple times because she wants to come back i wasn't allowed to accompany her because they think i might be a danger to her more on this later I'm talking to another lawyer, a very good one. He reached out to me here on Reddit, actually, and it turns out he's a friend of a friend's, and I was, uh, and I was able to do, and was able to deduce who I was from the posts. I was wrong when I thought my brother would back down, and I was an idiot for thinking he would give over Lou so calmly. I was going to try to follow a timeline. The legal process is being handled, but I'm upset, and I guess this is a rant, and self pity post. Or something. Because I can't stop crying. Five days ago, I was home with Lou. She was watching a movie and I was working when the power cut off. We have scheduled hours where the lights are shut off, but it wasn't in the schedule. I wasn't worried too much. My laptop was charged and I let her finish the movie on my laptop. I didn't really realize at this point that without the electricity, my security cameras don't work. Long and tedious story short, my brother had turned off the power turned off the breaker he broke in i shoved lou into my room and made her lock the door he beat me up i think he would have killed me if my neighbors hadn't heard the commotion my father was home and he barged over my door was open he got my brother off of me and this is where my neighbor his daughter called the police this is where things get messy i was bleeding my face was still bruised up i can't put any weight on my left leg my brother claimed that i had kidnapped lou and was <clears throat> abusing her I, I i saw your i saw the shift in your face you're just like this bitch um was eswilly abusing her and josh and he were here to get her back i had evidence that they had given lou over willingly and when it came to the abuse allegations it was lou's word against her brother and parents yes apparently josh parroted those words the two policemen who shoot, who showed up seemed suspicious when Lou kept clinging to me, refusing to go. I don't know how I was functioning in that moment, but I managed to call my lawyer who dealt with most of it, and I had to be taken to the hospital. It looks bad, but I'm fine-ish. To all of those who kept telling me to keep to record conversations, etc., thank you. His allegations and my sister-in-law's words about Lou made a weak case. 
but it was enough for social services to get involved. They removed Josh and Lou because I started because I started talking. I had evidence, loads of it, and I shoved it down their throats. I was still in my apartment at that point. I hadn't left for the hospital. I couldn't. Lou was crying. My lawyer was on his way. If I had gone, I was scared they would give Lou to my brother. Also, when I say social so- social services, it's basically an equivalent of some child care organization. Generally, generally, we don't have social services per se, but this is a government agency. I filed charges against my brother, and the social security person was supposed to come the day after, but I had to go to the hospital. The police accompanied me and let me keep Lou by my side. I didn't have any broken bones, so I was discharged the afternoon, next afternoon. I would like to point out that my parents visited and tried to take Lou with them, but a policeman who was waiting with me wouldn't let them. I was also protesting. I have to skip stuff here because I'm mentally drained right now, and this, but this, the gist is that four days ago I got a visit from this lady from social services who said that because of the allegations, they have to remove Lou from my care till the investigation is complete. My cousin stepped up and took her in, and my parents took Josh. This is ongoing. I don't know why they did this. I'm shaken beyond belief. I'm tired. I can still hear Lou crying in my ears. I don't know why. I wake up terrified at night thinking somebody's in the room. I've been sleeping with the lights on. A friend is sleeping over since the whole thing happened. One of my friends got a small generator for my apartment, which I can use to keep the security cameras running and the lights if the electricity is shut off. My sister-in-law is telling everyone that I abused her children. My parents have called me, but I have not answered. My lawyer wants me to go in for an evaluation. My brother is in jail because I pressed charges, but I heard that my parents are going to post bail. My life feels like it's gone to shit. God damn. That is... uh, Okay, please... Wait, there's one more update, right? Okay, there's a mini update, and then there's one more final update. Okay. I really want this to end on a high note. Or at least a sem- at least a somewhat good note, because I think it does. Yikes. So, a small piece of good news: the social security lady came over this morning. She said that based on all the evidence her department has received and the interviews they have conducted from the neighbors, teachers, etc., they are confident that my sis- brother and sister in law's claims are baseless. It's pretty damning evidence. The biggest factor was that they took both Lou and Josh and had a call had a child psychologist evaluate them they don't so they don't show signs of abuse and josh ended up admitting what his parents had told him to say both kids have now permanently been removed from my brother and sister-in-law's care social security lady found it disturbing like many of you how sister-in-law referred to lou and that they are considering terminating parental rights that's what she said The case is still ongoing and going to be investigated further, but since the accusation was verbal and not a filed report, she says it should be fine. I am not, I am now allowed to visit Lou, supervised, and I am taking some DIY craft stuff for her and her cousins and will stay over for a night. My cousin has been really supportive throughout this whole thing, which makes me feel so much better. I spent an hour FaceTiming Lou and she was happier. I set up a small shop online to sell digital designs when she first moved in with me. And she and I have been spending hours making them together. She's very artsy, so I know she enjoys it. She kept talking about her and her cousins, three girls in her age group, have been drawing pretty designs and all three of them keep popping onto the screen. It just showed me that having her there long term might be the best solution. My cousin has mentioned that if things go the way they are going, he and his wife might consider adopting Lou. There's more to this, but while it's a good thing, talking about it makes me a little sad, so I'm just not going to for a while. Both he and his wife gave really good reasons, which makes sense. My brother lost his job, which is not something I mentioned in my last post. Not just because he went to jail, but because I blasted him and so sh- and sister-in-law on social media tagging their colleagues that didn't go over well with my family my parents showed up and had a lot to say they didn't so much ask me how i was doing physically they kept saying i had destroyed my brother's family because i couldn't leave well enough alone my lawyer was over at the time and took great pleasure in kicking them out so yeah that's where things are standing now i have a feeling i might never get lou back but the family that she's with might be the best option financially and emotionally. I did a book meeting with 
I did book a meeting with a therapist today. It's going to be next week. A lot of you pointed out that I might be a little traumatized from the break-in, which is true. I don't know much about Josh. I know none of this is his fault, but part of me resents him, which isn't fair. I haven't reached out to him, and I don't want to. My friends are telling me that once this whole thing is sorted, he will need somebody by his side if he stays with my parents. He'll go down the, if he stays with my parents, he'll go down the same path as my brother. I think they're suggesting I take him in when the time comes. I don't know. I don't want to. I can't forget how he told the social security later, social security, social services lady that I abused him. My cousin has refused to take him in as well. So semi good update and sad. My cousin will come pick me up in a couple hours. I got some DIY glass paint kits for the girls and some beading and strings for bracelets. And we got one more update after that. We got the final update. Final update. <laughs> All right, come on, come on, St- come on, end strong. For the love of God, please. <laughs> For the love of God, don't stroll ahead. Just read. Okay. So it's been a while since my last update, and I was pondering over whether or not to make this one, but I got a lot of requests, so here it goes. My name is cleared legally from every angle. Surprisingly, it didn't take much time. I had a sit down with Josh a few days ago, and by that I mean his school is near my house, and I found him in front of my apartment building when I came home from my doctor's appointment last week. I didn't want to be alone with him, so I asked my neighbor and her dad to linger about while I called my lawyer. I know I kept turning to him for every sneeze, but I don't know what to do. Oh, her lawyer. Okay. After the accusations, I simply don't want to be alone with him. There was a lot of crying. I get that his entire family unit has been destroyed and he's feeling insecure in a way. He can't see his parents for some reason. My parents have been blaming him for what happened. That pissed me off. This happened because they did a shitty job of raising their own son. Josh asked me if he could stay with me instead. Now, the social services lady who was in charge of this case wanted to keep Josh and Lou separate for some reason. My lawyer called to tell her what was happening. She arrived in my apartment within the hour. I have to say you hear shit about these so- you hear shit about these sort of people, but this lady was super sweet. She listened to Josh and then listened to me privately. I expressed my concerns. However, she said it might be better to have Josh here than my parents. Now, that is something that has me uneasy. I told her that, and she told me that if I have security cameras inside, I should get them in every room if I'm worried. But the child psychologist working with Josh has said he is under too much stress. His schoolwork is suffering. He's not sleeping well. He feels safer here despite everything. So now Josh is staying with me. I'm being normal with him, but I guess I kind of messed up. When he tries to get a hug or something, I move away. I found him crying day before yesterday about this. I feel like shit for it. I told him to give me time and that I do love him. He's shaken beyond anything and he's used to being loud and brash and now he's none of those things. He has circles under his eyes and he's always just tired and quiet. I'm talking to my therapist about it and he told me to let him in bit by bit and that he faced his own sort of trauma. I've started being more physically affectionate like I used to be and that seems to make him relieved. It's just it's just been a week or so so I hope he gets better. A lot of you told me to leave him be, but with these two but when these two kids were born, I was there. I was very involved in their lives. He's not asked about Lou and if he can see her, but or he's he has asked about Lou and if he can see her, but when I said not yet, he seemed to understand. He drew a card for her, but I'm holding on to it for now. His psychologist says he feels guilty. There's a lot of guilt there's a lot of guilt inside him and he's not dealing with it well. I took him to the movies yesterday. That was something he'd been wanting for a while, but he just slept through it all. I'm worried, but his psychologist his psychologist tells me to just give him time and love. My parents were pissed, by the way. As was my brother and sister-in-law. I got phone calls from all of them. Sister-in-law showed up at my house. I'm considering moving. It's just not safe. My entire family is losing their shit. I have apparently destroyed their reputation and entire family, etc. Lou is good. Lou is thriving. A two-parent household is good for her, like many of you said. She used to call a lot, but those calls have lessened over the past two weeks, which is good for her, I guess. She's adjusting. My cousin and his wife adore her. 
Her cousins like having her there. I started going to therapy. It's going okay. My leg is better. And my face is looking less like a child went at it with crayons. I still have nightmares, but my focus is on Josh right now. So that has me distracted. Well, you know, I, I gotta say good for OP, you know, finally like getting at least some silver lining out of all this. But my God, like, I feel bad for them having to go through all that shit. I just, I, I noticed it's a common thing of like posts like that where people were like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to ignore this person in our family being abusive or whatever. And if you say anything about it, then you're destroying this family. Like, if you we're worried about destroying the family, maybe don't have somebody in your family that is doing I lied. Be... There's two more updates. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, maybe don't be the destroyer, you know? Okay. You want me to read them? Uh, might as well. I mean, we're, this, we're, this we're, this out we're deep into 10 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Update. Niece and nephew. I've been getting so many messages for an update. Also, I'm sorry for not replying to them all. Things have been hectic for a while. Lou has settled into my cousin's family quite well. Phone calls have dec- decreased from her, from her end, but when I do check on her, she's thriving. I feel like I'm a reminder of her worst times, and that's probably why she doesn't contact me much. I'm happy for her. It's better for her to be safe and happy than look back at her past, which I'm a part of. Her school has been changed. My cousin and his wife have started the legal adoption process. I was trying to send her money every now and then, but my cousin told me that I don't have to. She's not using her Etsy account all that much either, but she gets pocket money, and I got her a small Mickey Mouse money box to save money in. As for Josh, he's going to be removed from my care soon. He's doing well with me, but his therapist says that he too needs a fresh start. I have have family in another city, first cousins. And they have a son around Josh's age. They reached out to me and asked if they and asked if they could take Josh in. They've heard of everything, and I think they want to help. I've taken him out to visit them twice so far. I've explained things to him, and so has his parent, his therapist. The thing is that I can't take custody of him in the legal sense because I'm single. I mean, I can, but the legal hula hoops I have to go through are going to take time, and the past might be rehashed which won't be good for him also the social security lady i don't know why i keep doing that because it's up social security and social well because they just write ss and i see ss and think social security yeah social services lady who's been with us throughout considers this the best course of action for josh like i said josh has been doing better now but with everything that happened his school friends know about what he did and he's lost friends nearly all of them When I mentioned him potentially being adopted, he asked if he would move to a new school and be able to make new friends. I think that's what he wants desperately. He has changed as well. Quiet, depressed. He misses Lou, but not their parents. Lou misses him as well, but the damage to both of them is one of the kind that we need to recover, that needs to recover individually first. His therapist is adamant he not be in touch with his parents or grandparents or even Lou for right now. From what I've been told, Josh went through a different trauma, but since I'm not a legal guardian, he can't share any of those details with me. So I think in another couple months, Josh will be gone from here as well. If it's the best decision for him, then that's what I'll do. I've been teaching him how to write letters and post them. My dad taught me when I was young, and I used to love it. Josh also enjoys doing it. He's written two letters to his his therapist who encouraged the idea. He promised to write me letters once he's gone. Since everything, his social media presence has been erased for his safety. I've been in a weird place. Things have been hard. I ended up applying to a graduate job position, a couple of them. I just wanted to leave the country now. Once Lou and Josh are settled, their therapists want to minimize my role in their lives. Anyway, I got rejected from all those jobs. That had me down for a while. I got a cat, though. Once Josh is gone as well, I I don't want to be lonely. If I have something to love and to care for, I think I'll be okay. My cat thinks she owns me, though. (laughs) I'm going to finish my certifications, keep applying for jobs outside of my country as as well as inside. 
maybe something will come up. It's so easy to just give up when the going gets tough. And it's so easy to not see everything I've been blessed with and focus on the negatives. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to be positive about the future. My parents did reach out to me, not to yell at me this time, but just to talk. They looked older than they are and weary. My brother and sister-in-law got a divorce or they're in the process of it. My brother was arrested when he broke into sister-in-law's house at night and had some, quote, stuff with him. For some reason, sister-in-law was expecting him to and she called the police, locking herself in her room. Brother's been arrested again. My parents haven't bailed him out this time. I never asked why. The whole thing is a mess. My parents just asked to see Josh and I refused. I told them why. I said a lot to them. They didn't argue this time. They just listened and left. I didn't want to be a part of this drama. I miss them because they're my parents, but too much has happened. Sister-in-law has not reached out for her kids even once. Shocker. Oh, that made my blood boil. Shocker. There's a restraining order against my brother, and he's not allowed to approach me or the kids, so I have not heard from him either. I think Josh and Lou will soon be happy and well settled in their new lives, and most importantly, loved. All in all, for them, this is a happy as this is as happy of an ending as it can be, given the circumstances. I'll be fine, I guess. I'm trying to focus on my certifications and see where they take me. And I have a cat now. Just wanted to tell that every. I just wanted to tell everyone that again. And she's really cute and vicious, and it makes me happy. <laughs> so, last update. Zopi trying to be like, hey, cats solve everything. <laughs> I mean, look at this little sleepy cinnamon roll next to me. Mochi. Stop it. Okay, this one. <coughs> Excuse me, this one's a short one. But sure, this sure final one. Yeah, this is the last last update. Okay. I'm buckled in. I'm ready. I need to take a few breaths because I am ready to <sighs> set this building on fire. Right. As a person who desperately wants to be a mother, I just do not understand how you mistreat your child. I, I just, I can't wrap my brain around it. Right? Like, so many good parents, like, people who know they're going to be good parents are struggling to actually be parents. And the people, the people who are able to be parents the easiest are the shitty ones. Right. Okay. So, first of all, I wanted to thank everyone who has been here during with me during this tumultuous journey. You offered love, advice, and and wishes, and everything from the sun and the moon, and I am grateful. I know I'm barely able to reply to messages, but know that I have read all of them. To those who offered help, financial, job-wise, listening ears, I appreciate it, but I have never been good at accepting help, something I'm still addressing in therapy, but the gestures touched me. You all made me feel like I had to do, like all I had to do was reach out and someone would hold my hand, and that meant a freaking lot to me. For me, writing all these have helped. Venting to all of you when I couldn't see past my own nose was helpful in a way you might not understand. It's been a terrible couple of months and my life has changed a lot. And I have this community to thank for that as well. For the update, Lou is thriving, which is great. Josh has also left. He is settling in with his new family. Both kids have my number and know I will be there for them whenever needed. But I'm going to focus on my life, lose weight, try to become active, focus on my data analyst career or data data analyst courses, focus on my writing, maybe self-publish in the future. Who knows? I'm 29. I want to travel. I want to work on myself. The children are happy or will be, hopefully, and that has me at ease. I made this post. I made this update because I wanted you to know I wanted all of you to know. Oh, let me start over. I made. <laughs> I'm like, well, because my eyes are watering because now I'm going to cry. I made this update because I know all of you have been part of this journey and sometimes some journeys need to be clearly wrapped up with a bow. Fortunately, Josh and Lou will grow into be strong and emotionally intelligent individuals. And I wanted you all to know that. I won't be making any more updates for them now. I'll still be on this Reddit, but this chapter is closed. I want the kids happy, and I think they will be now. And maybe when they're older, they might find these posts, but that's a long time coming. So thank you all. I appreciate all of your kindness and prayers and thoughts. You've given given me more strength than you realize. I did not realize my Am I the Asshole 
post was going to lead us down that rabbit hole. You didn't go on a fucking journey? Like, my God. Like, I don't know what more to say to that, because obviously, because I was going to comment about the, like, brother and sister law. I mean, they're, I, you know, I use the term human being loosely there, but it looks like they're getting their comeuppance, and the kids are actually, you know, doing better, and OP is actually, you know, doing the best they can. Yeah, and I did see... So pretty much everything I wanted to happen, happened. And while I did see, um, while I was scrolling through their post, or their their page, that they um, posted something about having fertility issues. Yeah. So I was like, ooh. This is getting a little close to home. (laughs) This is getting a little too close for comfort. (laughs) (laughs) Not that we would have to remove our nephews from their parents' care by any stretch of the imagination. Right. I mean... Those parent, I mean those, those boys are loved beyond measure. No, oh, yeah, no doubt. But, but yeah, those that brothers is like my god, like, like I said, I use the term human loosely. Well, and the fact that the sister in law wanted to abort, and I'm assuming that was after she found out she would be having a girl. Probably just the way they doted on Josh. Right. Probably. Oh, it just makes my blood boil. Well, it looks like they, you know, obviously they're separated and, you know, they're getting the shit out of the sick, whereas the kids in OP are like, hey, we're actually doing better than you. It sucks that the kids had to be separated in the end, but I get it. Right. And the whole thing with that is that, like, obviously, kind of like OP said, like, if they want to, like, see each other or they want to repair that relationship, that's something that has to be start individually first. Right. Like, they had to start, you know, repairing that themselves. And, like, I can't even imagine, like, not having a relationship with my sisters. No, I couldn't. I I can't even begin to imagine. I couldn't imagine being separated from my siblings either. Just, like, as much as, like, as much as Amanda gets on my nerves, I mean, we're, like, that. Well, you and Amanda are also the same person, so... I mean, yeah, there is that. But, like, I mean, my my brother... I mean, same thing with, like, you, Manny, and you, and Ryan. You guys are pretty Yeah, my, pretty we, tight. we are pretty tight. I mean, my brother and I don't talk, but I could call him right now and be like, um, I need help. Well, yeah, that's... I mean, that's the thing with me. I'm, and he'd be like, where you at? <laughs> just, that's the thing. I'm, like, I'm a lot like Ryan, too. Like, I don't really talk much to family, but that doesn't mean I don't like him. I just have nothing to right. say and growing up i mean growing up there was a six-year difference between me and my sister and a four-year difference between her and my brother so we beat on each other a little bit but nothing like pushing somebody down the stairs and laughing at them while they're screaming in literally pain literally laughing at their pain yeah well i'm glad for the most part it seemed like it had a pretty happy ending anyway i mean i I would consider that a happy ending. I mean, the kids are seem to be doing well for themselves, and OP is, you know, working on themselves and doing better. So, I think that's really what I could hope for in the end. Yeah, I mean, what more can you ask for? Yeah, so, you know, glad everything worked out. And yeah, my God, you found, you actually found a fucking journey. Like a I fucking did. Lord of the Rings six-part series. I did. We, we went on an adventure there. Like fucking... It was the Am I the Asshole post written by J.R.R. Tolkien. Right. <laughs> but, oh my god, yeah, that was a great episode. And I guess the moral, the overall theme, happy birthday. <laughs> At least the Am I the Asshole started See, with a, a birthday with that post. Last, <laughs> with that last story, I completely forgot I themed this episode around birthdays. <laughs> we went on a journey. Right. But, yeah, I guess that'll do it for this episode. My God, that's probably one of, this is probably one of my favorite Reddit episodes I've done. And also, you're you welcome. Know, <laughs> thank you. But also, you know, it's birthday theme. Like I said, I turned 31 in, uh, from the time, of, from the time of this episode, three days. At least, well, from the time of this recording, six days. But it'll be three days when this episode goes out. I was gonna say your birthday's not three days from now, but I it's on the thirtieth. That's that's all that's important. So while I go get older, you guys hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Ha ha, you're old. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. You know, whatever you're doing, morning, day, night, jogging, you know, having a wank. You know, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Some people masturbate the podcasts. I, Say I, that I a little bit louder. I don't think our neighbors heard you. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're moving anyway. Who cares? True. But anyway, I hope you guys. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, you know, drink plenty of water, do positive things out there. I do new episodes every Saturday, so, you know, keep track of that, write it in a notepad or something. But I've been Cameron. I've been Kate. You can find me on Instagram at Kate Does Hair and Kate Versus The World. Link in the description. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Stay weird, my friends. Drink water, you dehydrated rats.